Beautiful morning here in Edenvale for a uh, for a cylinder change. Now I uh, I'll, I'll address some of the comments that I got in the last in the last video. A lot of people saying, oh, you know, just lap the valve or do the rope trick or ream the valve guide. All of those things are great suggestions, but um, the problems are deeper than that. The problems are because this engine sat for so long, and so it was one of those things we always knew we'd had to do. And we're torn between doing a total complete top overhaul. Um, and what we're actually doing, which is one cylinder at a time. And I think what's, what's going to happen is that probably this winter, when we get into November and the icing levels get low and the weather gets horrible here and uh, there's no flying for a small GA aircraft most of the time just because of, of weather issues of where we are, um, that engine will come off for a complete top overhaul. In the meantime, it's summer. <laughs> There's beautiful flying weather and replacing a cylinder um, is going to make sure that I don't have the problems that we're anticipating over the course of the summer. And it's one of those things where, you know, Chris says you could go probably, you know, maybe 100, 300, 500 more hours before there's any difficulty. Do um, you want to take that chance? Not really. Let's do it. Another issue that a lot of people bring up is the idea of uh, maintenance induced failure, which is you get in there and you you start torquing nuts and moving stuff around and you end up um, causing more problems than you fix. Definitely don't want that to happen. I gotta get out of the way. Someone else is coming in for maintenance. Um, don't want that to happen, but those that's a risk that you have to take. That's a risk that always exists. Um, let's change a cylinder. Okay, you know what we should do? Um, <laughs> let's get the other cylinders ready. Or I guess it doesn't matter. We gotta get the, the other ones need to be opened up. We need to get uh, the ring fitted and stuff like that. Okay. But that's, that's okay. We can, I'll pop them off. First one. I think the way you did was phase two. You cut a piece of metal. Okay, so it's just a simple, uh, they call it fuel test. This is Varsol, right? But you could use fuel or whatever, yeah. right? And so we're going to pour it first in the exhaust valve, right? And then in the intake valve. Right, and we'll just give it a little a second or two and a little bit of gravity. It's coming through the exhaust on that one. And around. It's coming through both of them. Coming through both of them, right? And we could probably relap and do it and, like, uh, and correct it. The problem with the lapping is that it's probably the guide that's worn out. And so we lap it. How long does it last? Does it last 25, 50, 100? Uh, my old job, we used to try and do it, and you know, if we got 50 or 100 hours more out of that cylinder, and it's so labor intensive to start changing out these cylinders, and, and then the risks of the crankcase not getting torqued down correctly and stuff like that play in. And so the Superior's got a pretty reasonably priced cylinder, I think, for what it would cost to fix these. These are all chrome bore. They don't really make them no more. I guess they still do, but so that one's, see that one's all intake. Yeah. Right. This is the part where I don't want to get in Chris's way, but... <laughs> this is the part where sometimes I break a ring. Um, this is checking the ring gap. Right? Yeah. They're generally, it's superior, they're generally okay. It's pretty rare, you gotta do it, but you still kind of, best practice is your best check. So everything gets lube. Just oil on the face, you put it in. 
My hands are oily as all shit now. Pretty much like right. I'll have a distance, I think it's an inch and a half. What does it say here? I usually edit out the point where we consult the manual, but we do consult the manual. Chris, make sure that everything's done properly. So 1.2 puts us, that's when we're shoving the piston. Yep. So 1.2 will put us about halfway through that. This is to make sure it lines up straight so it's not sitting canted in there. There's 23, should go. And where'd it go? There. 23 goes. And then the high one would be 36. So it talks about, so the sonar has a choke shaped like this as it heats up, it straightens out. And so the choke, and so they're gonna say here, uh, scroll again, it's gonna tell us to go up to uh, the end of the stroke, I think it says, uh, 1.2 inches, that's what we just did. That's what a new cylinder and piston head looks like. Yeah, they're fine, they get pretty gnarly before they Oh shit, those are all really clean. Let's see. Not even, maybe not even considered light. So inside it's looking good. It looks good inside, yeah. Yeah. The, it's just for some reason these cylinders don't want to cooperate. But we'll get a whole bunch of new ones on there sooner or later. Okay, so we're on. We'll ease it up to our torque specification. And of course we'll torque the other side. And what else can we do? Go in steps, that's a step. Blow. <laughs> And it runs nicely, mag drops are normal, everything's warming up correctly. Mag drops are normal, oil pressure warmed up nicely, idles nicely. There's a little bit of a spot there, see it right there. Oh, that one looks really good, that one's got a touch. Yeah. The other ones are real dry. Edenville traffic, Foxtrot, Mike picked uniform rolling on runway 31, Edenville.
Okay, so we're still in the climb out. I'm climbing at a uh, shallower climb, which was recommended. Everything's good. Power's good. Oil temperature's good. Oil pressure. Run pretty smooth. Edenville traffic, Foxtrot Mike Vic uniform departing to, departing to the northeast towards Aurelia at 3,100, climbing 5,500, switching to 126.7 Edenville. So I've got it set up in a basic cruise climb at this point. Uh, 91 miles an hour and 500 feet per minute is the climb. Full rich. Throttle full open. 2400 RPM, 2440 RPM at this uh, at this rate. Okay, so we're tripped out straight and level. We've got the uh, autopilot on, pulling us on a, on a good track, keeping our altitude correct. Uh, this portion of the flight, this first, I'm going to take about an hour and a half to get back to uh, Oshawa. This first hour and a half, I'm supposed to keep it at 75% uh, power, or, you know, between 75 and, you know, 78, something like that. And then on tomorrow's flight, for like hour two until uh, the oil burn normalizes, I need to vary my power between 65 and 75 on like a time frame. And I will review that before tomorrow. I didn't think much about it today because I just wanted to concentrate on what I needed to do today. So I'm watching extremely carefully my temperatures, uh, the oil pressure and um, the oil temperature, just to make sure that everything is going the way it's supposed to and it looks like we are um, so I've, I've got uh, 2450 rpm we're doing uh, 120 true airspeed and uh, we're burning 8.3 8.4 gallons per hour they wanted me to burn a little bit on the rich side um, for this for this first hour and a half so we're going to stay a little bit on the rich side for that and now it's just uh, follow our flight plan back to Oshawa in a big loop. Traffic in the sweet burger, Cessna 172, Gulf Coast Canada, Quebec at 3,300 feet. We'll be descending to 1,900 feet. Uh, tracking to it, Tosenberg. Uh, last call for Austin, the Quebec, we have switch to Tosenberg. Traffic in the Eugenia Lake area, Gulf Bravo, remember Gulf, is five nautical miles to the northwest of Eugenia Lake, 5,500, tracking to southbound Brampton. Traffic at the uh, bottom end of Shimong Lake, it's uh, Papa in November, 2,800 on We have the aircraft site. Traffic there will be French on the radio. Oh, sure. Tower, Fox, Trot, Mike, Victory, Uniform. Fox, Trot, Mike, Victory, Uniform, Oshawa Tower. Oshawa Tower, Fox, Trot, Mike, Victory, Uniform, Cessna 172, with information Papa, currently abeam the town of Blackstock at 3,900, descending inbound for landing, last departed to Edenville. Mike Victory, Uniform, Runway 12, wind sir, south at 5, altimeter 3025, cleared left base, Runway 12, report over Columbus, squawk 1232. One two three two cleared left base runway one two report over Columbus. Mike Victor Uniform. Mike Uniform Hotel, fly right hand circuit, clear for takeoff runway one two. Fly right hand circuit, yes, let's take off, I uniform hotel. Oscar Oscar Whiskey, clear to land runway one two. Clear to land one two, Oscar Oscar Whiskey. Oscar Whiskey, Mike Lima, Oshawa Ground, runway one two, winds one nine zero at six, altimeter three zero two five, taxi via Alpha Bravo, in contact tower one two zero decimal one, holding short. Papa, Papa, holy show at 1-2, we should make it. Oh, Joe, Mike Bravo, uh, the information pop up. 
Golf Hotel Zulu Juliet, Oshawa Tower, to the left on runway 05, contact ground 118.41. Left on 05, Golf Hotel Zulu Juliet. Clean from Hotel, Oshawa Tower, winds 190 at 6, traffic exiting on runway 05, clear to land runway 12. Traffic exiting runway, clear to land, accurate from Hotel. Calling Oshawa Ground, say again. No problem. 0041, contact tower 120.1, holding short. Let's see off my problem. With 0041, it's about code 2 of my problem. Mike Victor Uniform, Osh Tower, you're number 2, you're following traffic short final. Traffic in sight, Mike Victor Uniform. Do you make Bravo Osh Ground, just confirm which direction you're going, northwest? Northwest, 2 of my problem. Mike Victor Uniform, Osh Tower, traffic exiting runway 05, the winds 200 at 7, clear to land runway 12. Two. Cleared 12, two, Mike Victor Uniform. I see that enterprise happening. Dr. Levin, Oshkan, Roger, you can taxi via Delta over to G6. Okay, Oshkan, Tower, this is Global Golf Rafa Quebec, holding short runway 12, ready for departure, and requesting an on the roll takeoff. Golf Golf Rafa Quebec, Oshkan, ground, standby. Golf Echo, Oshawa Tower, change on route frequencies. Change on route, Lima Golf Echo. Oshawa Ground Echo, Echo Uniform Hotel request taxi instruction back to the Enterprise. Echo Uniform Hotel, Oshawa Ground, taxi via Bravo back to Enterprise. Have a good night. Taxi Bravo to Enterprise, Echo Uniform Hotel, good night. Contact ground one off, Mike Victor Uniform, thank you. Golf Golf Bravo Quebec, Oshawa Tower, the left turn northbound, clear takeoff runway one two. Clear takeoff runway one two, Golf Golf Bravo Quebec. Okay, so it's the next day. I got back to the hangar last night, uh, about seven thirty in the evening. Exhausted. Um, it was a big job yesterday. I mean, actually changing the cylinders isn't that hard. It's removing all of the wires and moving the baffling and then remembering where everything was threaded through when you put it back together so that it's all nice and neat under the cowl. Um, but I was, I was pretty exhausted from the flight. Uh, if you've never gotten in a plane for a test flight after it's had some, some major work done to it, um, it's pretty stressful. It is pretty stressful. Um, you're constantly thinking of all of the outs, what's going to happen, if something bad happens, where are you going to go, how are you going to deal with it, what are you looking for, but the wonderful thing was it was completely uneventful. The flight was completely uneventful. All of the pressures and temperatures were in the right range. Um, we weren't burning any oil, we weren't leaking any oil. Um, even this morning there's no drips underneath the cowl and um, the oil level is pretty much the same as when we left Edenville. So, very successful. Next flight is to actually finish breaking in those two cylinders. Um, so come on back and we'll take a flight somewhere up north. A couple hours. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.